The People's Democratic Party, PDP, says the lingering feud between Governor Aysen Talia of Benue State and leaders of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the state has vindicated its sustained outcry over the misrule of the President, of the President Administration in the state. The party, in a statement by its state publicity secretary, Bengba Eotium, noted with shock that the crisis that deteriorated so badly that the National Assembly caucus of the, of the party urged President Bola Tinumbu to intervene in the matter. Quote, in the full glare of the global press, 11 out of the 12 members of the Benue APC National Assembly caucus were present and took turns raising very grave concerns over Governor Alea's manner of governance, ranging from authoritarian and emergency-style running of the affairs of government, without regard for due process, the rule of law, or consultation and inclusivity in decision-making, as well as corruption and mismanagement of public resources." Unquote. Quote, it went further, it says, it was indeed a crying shame to see the government of Benue State called out in such a bismally low manner and with such sordid details, unquote. Joining us is the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Hyacinth Alia, Terso Kulas, and Publicity Secretary, Publicity Secretary Daniel Ihomu. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to Plus Politics. Oh, you're welcome this evening. Okay. Um, how would you want to respond to the seemingly disturbing intro uh, that I just read now for, uh, to the program? How would you want to respond to it, sir? Oh, yeah, we, we are a government, but before then, we are a political party. A political party will use as machinery to get into problems. And so, uh, I will not be surprised to hear uh, our colleagues from the other side of the drive make such statements. But I must tell you that in a family, normally, in between husband and wife, you are bound to find some kind of friction. What matters is how you are able to manage the friction that becomes an issue. Uh, I think. Uh, of course, I'm not expecting something different in the PDP, but I must tell you that the restriction we have has not gone that far. But somebody will think that when it's going to finish our political party, the leaders of this party are so understanding, they will still themselves right from the time of politics after the time of governance. So I don't think uh, there's something to cry over the way they are good. I must assure you that we're good and we're on the good path. And uh, I know that we shall overcome this very soon. Uh, the, the PDP has to do what any opposition party has to do, and that is uh, call you out. I called the government, and indeed, the ruling party called them out. Uh, but however pedestrian that role may seem, there is a fact that cannot be, that cannot be um, easily, easily uh, uh, hidden. And that fact is that the governor, who is supposed to be the leader of the party at the level of the state seems to be working in such a way that is somewhat losing or has somewhat lost the confidence of those who ought to work with him. And that is why they have gone out 
to cry to the world that he seems to be functioning as a as a as an autocrat. Don't you don't you think that in itself does not speak well of of the governor? Or are these people just mischievous? They went out there to just go portray him as though uh, he is difficult to work with. Oh yes, thank you so very much. That's a very strong question. I must tell you that uh, Nigerians are not stupid. They know people are not stupid. They read in between the lines. They also listen all things. Now I must tell you that when you say the people, the government is supposed to work with, uh, read. Yeah, who are those people? Perhaps you may answer that uh, the National Assembly members. That's a mistake. I mean, perhaps we're talking about stakeholders. But what do you think of it? Are they the only stakeholders? Can you, of truth, say that it is only the National Assembly members that are the stakeholders of this political party in the United States? And perhaps you may say that uh, a few days ago, or a few weeks ago, the federal local government chairman of uh, the party also came up with very wow. And I ask again, when you talk of stakeholders of the state, stakeholders of the party, is that limited to elected, to these selected people, the core party officials and people who were elected just like the government to go to the national assembly? I raised this question when I once wrote a rejoinder to what they did. And my concern is that, who actually are these people speaking for? Are they speaking for the masses of the states? Are they speaking for the non the people who are dehumanized? Who are they speaking for? Or are they speaking for themselves? And before somebody make a mistake and say that Rory Father Alia is not sensitive to the structure that brought him into power, let me tell you that no government that's ever giving credence, that's ever giving respect to the political machinery that brought him to power than what Aaron Father Adler has done so far. I give this statistics. Shortly after he was appointed, I mean, elected as governor, he went and picked the chief of staff among the state ESCO members. The current chief of staff is the former, is the former secretary of that party in Benue State, right on the board then, or the general secretary of the party in Benue State. The governor also picked the legal advisor of the party and made him the attorney general of the state. The governor also picked the woman leader of his zone. The woman is from the A and made her an SSA of the, uh, of the government. I want to tell you that the party structure is fully, fully, fully represented in that ESCO. And then with these five months, I say five months, the Reverend Father Hassan earlier scored two consecutive stakeholders, Spanish stakeholders meeting. And then there was a semi-congress too, which we fully sponsored. Of course, when he called this meeting, it was still directed. Though the leader of the party in the state, he directed the chairman the selection of who should come for that for, for those meetings was done by the chairman of the party. My friend and brother, Comrade Austin Agada, was the one who selected the secretary for that meeting. All the National Assembly members were invited for these meetings, including our uh, own father, uh, the SGA, Senator J. Jacob, the minister, so say, every other stakeholder of the party at the center was invited to come to the meeting. And of course, they all came. All this time, he invited the UK. And an open check was thrown to them. Yes, we are constituting a state executive council. Can you bring them to us? Yes, we are constituting a caretaker committee for the local government. Can you go and bring some names to us? This was done. And so, uh, I just learned this. When somebody comes out the party, bring out some members of the party to be representatives of that party in the ESCO. I wonder what more we want him to do that the party will know that he actually recognized him. And then when you talk about the stakeholders saying that he's not consulting them, is he consulting from their teaching or not understand? Otherwise, 
You have called for a meeting, you sat with the governor, you are given an opportunity to express yourself, you make comments, and you, you know, not just once or twice. But then you go, out, go back and then sit, I begin to wonder whether these people are actually speaking for the state. And then, what actually wor worries me so much is that I would have agreed with them if the party structure or if the stakeholders, as they call themselves, are worried that the gentleman, the Reverend gentleman, is not delivering on his promises. And so the party is, uh, is bound to suffer the consequences of his failure in the next coming election. Then I will understand. But when they came out to speak, they spoke about themselves. And you can observe that my colleagues who were there in that press conference stood up and asked sensitive questions, some of which they failed to answer up to this point. And so... Uh, okay, uh, uh, okay. That, uh, 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 I think it's about time. I, I think it's about time I asked you pointedly. Is there a problem between your principal and the secretary to the government of the federation? Because it does seem, to those of us who are political watchers, it does seem that the kafofo, this melodrama, is simply about people who are spokespersons of the SGF, secretary to the government of the federation, who has to keep a facade, a facade of a don who cannot speak and a governor who perhaps wants to be independent in his, uh, in his decision making and how he rules, how he governs the state. Is that the situation? Well, I can't really tell because, first of all, uh, my principal has said it over and over that he has no issues. There has no issues with the SEO. And uh, uh, your, principal, checked, your, your principal has no issue with the SGF, but members of the National Assembly elected from Benue State had the temerity to call themselves together in a city where the number like the number five or number six man in the federation who also comes from Benue State is functioning and they held a press conference and you want to tell me that your principal does not know that they must have gotten the nod or the wink of the SGF to hold that session. Is that what you're trying to make me believe, sir? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe at this juncture you have to apply what is called the dog test. And what is this? What, is, what do I mean by the dog test? Well, he looks like a dog, he walks like a dog, he swims like a dog, and he does like a dog. He'll probably say dog. Well, of course, uh, <laughs> you never can tell. But sincerely, I must tell you that these guys were actually script. Well, I just explained to you how much uh, His Excellency has involved the structure that brought him into power, which is the machine recorded to see into his government. Now, after that, he called for several state Could your Excellency, could, could your, could your principal be, be, be seen by the SGF? Who is the de facto leader of the party in your state? I say de facto. The de jure leader of the party in your state is your principal because the constitution of the APC recognizes uh, that the governor, the elected governor of the state, who is the card carrying member of the APC, will be the leader of the party in the state. But we know that from the antecedents of the incumbent president, Whilst he was still an unelected official of state and the leader of the APC in Lagos, we know that there are some peculiar states where the de facto leader is not the de jure leader. Is your, is your principal now being portrayed or being... being uh, is your principal giving the impression as though 
Uh, because he has attained the office of the governor, he's trying to rubbish the machinery that brought him to office. But I just say this. How much you want me to say to me? How do you rubbish your machinery when you fully involve the machinery into the running of your government? How do you say you rubbish that, that machinery? I just told you. And I'll give you uh, examples and uh, evidence of how much of that he has done. I'll come, back to, you, I, I'll come back to you. The secretary of the APC, uh, the publicity secretary of the APC in Benue State is said to be alive now. Hello, my friend. Daniel Iho. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Daniel. Thank you very much. Daniel, you have a very difficult job to do these days as uh, the publicity secretary of the APC. The members of your party's caucus at the National Assembly are openly Op openly uh, castigating your, your governor. Uh, the party is in a state where, you know, the SGF, that is the de facto leader of your party in your state, but functions in Abuja, is keeping mom as though he, he doesn't know why those people are dressing the press. And your governor is insistent that he has no problem with anybody. What is, uh, how, how would you want to help our public to unravel this? I think what is happening in, my, in our state can be linked to a man having a very beautiful wife, yet the wife prostitutes with others and don't sleep with him. <laughs> the stakeholders of our party had complained to the committee of our party. There was a president, chairman of our party in the local government, you know, crying out to the state of the committee of the party that the governor is not carrying people along. It is taking critical decisions without consulting stakeholders of the party. And also, Oh, okay, okay, Daniel. Da Daniel Iromu. Daniel. Yes, sir. You are a major stakeholder of the party because you are the voice of the party in Benue State. At least. The, the bona fide voice of APC in Benue State. Your party owns the governor. Your party has the majority of National Assembly members. And your caucus had addressed the press. The chairman of the local government chairman of your party have also st openly stated that the governor is not carrying them along. What is your own take personally? Is the governor carrying the party executive along of which you are a member? My take is simple. As a member of the state working committee, we have asked these stakeholders to give us time to intervene and you know, discuss with the governor because the governor needs to meet with the party quickly to resolve these issues. I call these issues friendly fire, but the governor will need to sit up quickly, call the state chairman of the party, and engage the party in a meeting immediately so that we can resolve these issues immediately. Now, now you are the mercy, you are the mercy of the PDP, who is now making fun of your party as though you are a bunch of unruly politicals who don't seem to know your left from your right. The governor is singing from, from another in book. Uh, the party chieftains in the state are singing from another in book. The caucus, your, the, the, the party caucus at the National Assembly, they are not even in tune at all. And the SGF is pretending as though everything is on unky duty. But we can see that Benway State's APC is in a mess. Well, it, that is not true. In politics, there are interests. And of course, there's open for friendly fire. And so when these issues pop up, it is left for the party to you know, work together, to join forces, to 
you know, fix these issues. We all want Benya to develop. We all want good things for our people. But of course, it is early days, and in politics, these kinds of things happen, do happen. It is left to the governor to call uh, the party will the take us stakeholders, sit together and act these things for us to have headway. Uh, Daniel, we really want to thank you. Uh, sorry we don't have m much time to further engage with you, but we'll, we'll have a, you know, another opportunity. I, I also want to add that uh, the Bemo APC is united, <laughs> focused, and this is Daniel, very fast allowed. Daniel, Daniel, you would have to go to the Federal Secretariat in Abuja and the office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation and start singing that to the boards. For those of us Nigerians who are political watchers, it is obvious that something is, uh, something is not hanging, hanging tidily. Uh, with the Benway APC. Thank you very much. Very clear. Uh, pleasure for having you. No uh, problem. Tell us. The governor. Uh, the one who was up already coming stakeholders down. Yeah, no, no, we have to go. The time, we, we don't have much time anymore. Thank you. We, we'll do this another time. Uh, Mr. Tasso, thank you very much for the privilege of your uh, virtual presence. We do appreciate. Our regards to the, to, you know, to your principal. Thank you. Say, uh, we should have another time to talk about anything like this. But he raised some issues there that I needed to talk about. We'll, we'll, so, we'll do it another time. We will do it another time. The friendly fire, the friendly fire in Bermuda should not kill, should not kill some of the bots in the in the program. Thank you.